Deborah McMillan, a member of the League of Women Voters of East Windsor Heights Town. I'm pleased to be your moderator tonight for the Candidates Forum for Milltown Borough Council. The League of Women Voters of New Jersey encourages informed and active participation in government and works to increase understanding of major public policy issues. Elections, voting, and participation in all levels of government are our core concerns, and we welcome both men and women, citizens and non-citizens, as members. The League neither supports nor opposes political parties or candidates for office. We do support civil discourse on the issues, and as moderator, I will stop any questions um, that I deem abusive, personal, or irrelevant. This forum, organized by Milltown Local Access Channel, is completely consistent with our work to educate voters about candidates and candidates about the questions in their communities, as will be asked tonight. First by reporters, Kathy Chang from The Sentinel, Rob Rothershe from tap, sorry, tapinfonet.net, um, and also by the audience. Some of you have submitted questions. The table's in the back if you want to submit more. In order to include as many questions and responses as possible, please hold your applause until the end. And as a courtesy to the candidates and the rest of the audience, please turn down the volume and then turn off all cell phones and other electronic devices now. Please refrain also from taking photographs during the debate. The first part of, of uh, tonight's the first part of tonight's forum is the introductions by the candidates, um, together with bios that they have submitted for me to read. The first person, the first candidate, Phil Sembrano Jr. Sembrano Jr is age 55, he's, been, he's lived in Heights, excuse me, in Milltown 13 years. He is married, he has two daughters ages 20 and 16. He has a BA in finance from um, Cooney Baruch College. He's currently employed as business manager for Human Genetics Institute at Rutgers University. Phil served as a school board member in Milltown for five and a half years from 2011 to 2016. During the last three years of Phil's term, he served as the chair of the finance committee and as the board liaison between Milltown and Spotswood, where our Milltown children attend high school. Phil currently serves on the Milltown planning board and is also a member of the environmental commission. He now has three minutes to introduce himself to you. Good evening, uh, friends and neighbors. Uh, since mid-July of this year, Trina and I have been walking around Milltown, uh, going door to door to speak to the residents of the town. Uh, we thought it was important to meet folks face to face so that we could listen to their comments and so they could highlight their issues, whatever issues that, uh, that were important to them. Uh, fiscal responsibility, accountability, and transparency uh, were the three issues that were mentioned the most. Um, I've been a resident of Milltown now for 13 years. And um, we moved here because of the core values that we found in Milltown that were important to my family uh, and to me. Um, those values in included being involved in your local community, uh, being involved in your house of worship, and most of all, to help any of those folks uh, in the town wherever I could. For the last seven and a half years, I've worked at Rutgers University. Go Knights. During that time period, I've worked for the uh, School of Social Work, uh, the Office of Research and Sponsored Programs, and currently I work for the Rutgers Human Genetics Institute. As of tonight, uh, the Milltown Finance Committee, uh, which is chaired by uh, my opponent, Ron Dixon, uh, doesn't have a financial plan or a vision. Uh, under his guidance, uh, the, the town or the committee continues to make large financial commitments uh, that doesn't, doesn't think that it's important to budget for them. Um, under his guidance, uh, the same Finance Committee doesn't provide a detailed public presentation of how the borough's budget is prepared or how their tax dollars are going to be spent. Mr. Zabrano, yes. move, move on to what you, you, you sure. do rather than attacking. Oh, okay. Um, I'm confident with my background and experience in finance uh, that a public presentation of a detailed budget uh, can be prepared that will stabilize taxes and prioritize the important items facing our town. Um, I don't believe that just because I'm elected to office that I should stop listening to the views of the residents or that uh, I always have the pulse of the residents uh, to know what the residents really need. Um, 
These are just examples of transparency. Um, one very important one is that the Milltown Council continues to hold one public meeting a month. This is uh, much different than in past years where there were two meetings a month. This one meeting runs longer than usual. Lots of agenda items don't get addressed, which then leads to special meetings being uh, scheduled. Not at the most opportune times for the public to attend. Um, keeping the public informed by having more than one meeting a month, sending out NICSL alerts, starting a Twitter or a Facebook need for more important issues, those are examples of better communication. If Trina and I are fortunate enough to be elected to the council on November 7th, we pledge to return fiscal responsibility, transparency, and most importantly, communication to Milltown because, simply put, that's what the residents are looking for. Thank you. Sorry. Um, the next person, next candidate is Trina Mayer, also a Democrat. Trina Jensen Mayer was born and raised in Milltown. She attended Milltown Public Schools and Rutgers Preparatory School. She graduated from Smith College with a degree in economics and from Tulane University with a master's in business administration in finance and marketing. Along with her late husband, Paul, uh, sorry, excuse me, along with her late husband, Paul, Trina returned to Milltown in 1998 to raise her family. Her children, Peter, Jack, and Grace, are now aged 24, 21, and 19. She became involved in the community, especially the local schools, shortly after returning to the greatest little town in the land. In 2001, she co-founded and became the first president of the Milltown Education Foundation. She served as a trustee for eight years. She organized numerous fundraisers for the foundation, PTA, and eighth grade class. She has been a member of the Milltown Board of Education for over four years and is currently the Vice President. She is the Chair of the Public Relations and Strategic Planning Committee. Trina is an Information Associate at Bristol-Myers Squibb. Her work includes developing business processes and managing compliance systems in the highly regulated industry. She is trained and certified in Lean Sigma process simplification simplification and in project management. She is proud to be a third generation Milltowner and looks forward to continuing to serve the community that is such a wonderful place to grow up and to raise a family. Thank you. Good evening, Milltown. So nice to see so many happy, friendly faces here tonight. Thank you to Russ and his team for setting up the uh, forum. And also, thank you for those tuning in at home. I am honored to be a candidate for Milltown Borough Council. As a candidate, I've had the pleasure to speak with many residents over the last few months. As a council member, I will act on the concerns, comments, and questions that the people have raised. I'm running to lend my time, knowledge, and experience to do the best job I can for all the residents of Milltown. Phil and I have outlined three priorities based on the feedback we've gotten from residents. As he said, they are fiscal responsibility, transparency, and accountability. How many of you knew about the demolition of Ford Avenue last year, the oil spill, the condition of Mill Pond afterward, the lead in the water, that Milltown Day was canceled? I could go on and on. We tend to hear these things over time and from our friends and neighbors. We didn't get the information from borough officials. My question is, why not inform the public? Shouldn't we know what is happening on Ford Avenue? I didn't get a Nixle alert when the oil spill occurred. I get one when every water main breaks, but heard nothing when we had chemicals spilling into Mill Pond. Did you hear about the lead in the water before last week? The meeting was held because it was required by the DEP. How did you hear about the new municipal project? Most people we've talked to didn't get any information from the town about it. Have you ever had to call or email someone in the borough with a problem or question? Did you get a response? Many that we've talked to haven't. We think that is unacceptable. I've only had to contact the borough once. I sent two emails and two voicemails and got zero response. We have heard that same story over and over. All employees and borough officials must be held accountable. I would like to update the borough website and investigate the uses of other media to inform the public. However, regardless of what platform we use, the information must be shared. 
The main topic of conversation with residents is taxes and the increased utility rates. People are very concerned about the rate of increase recently. They want to know how their tax dollars are being spent. We pledge to be responsible with your tax dollars. I have been a single parent since my husband died 11 years ago. I had three children to put through college. I've had to make choices and prioritize my spending. When I needed a new car earlier this year, I would have loved to have gotten a luxury car, but I had to settle for a more modest model. We will ensure that the borough of Milltown takes the same careful approach to budgeting and planning that we all have to do at home. Again, thank you for your attention to the issues tonight. <clears throat> Thank you. Ron Dixon is to my right, your left. Ron Dixon is a retired law enforcement officer where he spent 30 years with the Middlesex County Prosecutor's Office as a lieutenant investigator and eight years as a police officer in Edison. Ron has worked in various investigative capacities with the United States government while employed with the County Prosecutor's Office. Ron was assigned to the U.S. Justice Department Drug, excuse me, the U.S. Justice Department Drug Enforcement Agency and worked with them for 15 years. His assignments included, but were not limited to, narcotics, smuggling, gang violence, organized crime, and clandestine labs. Additionally, Ron is, is a certified firearms instructor in the state of New Jersey. In 1988, Ron was elected president of the National Drug Enforcement Officers Association, Incorporated, and there he served three terms. Ron has served on council from 2009 to 2011 and from 2015 to the present. During his first term on council, Ron served as the chair for the Public Works, the Environmental, Health and Social Services Department, and the Parks and Recreation Department. He also served on the Milltown Municipal Alliance where he worked to promote the DARE, DARE program and created a June fishing derby to promote Get Hooked on Fishing, Not Drugs campaign. During Ron's current term on council, he has served as chair of the finance committee for his entire term where he has been responsible for the borough budget ensuring fiscal stabilization, where he has been responsible and for the budget ensuring fiscal stabilization. Ron has been council president since 2016. Ron is a certified DARE instructor with the Middlesex County DARE coordinator for the 45 Middlesex County DARE officers. Ron has served as post commander for American Legion Joyce Kilmer Post 25 in Milltown from 2005 to present. His work at the American Legion has helped, many, has helped veterans and their families, supported community programs, and assisted many Milltown organizations. Ron currently volunteers as a member of the Office of Emergency Management for both Middlesex County and the Borough of Milltown. Ron was selected as the 2014 Community Award of Excellence by the East Brunswick Charitable Foundation. Ron has four grown children and seven grandchildren. He lives on John F. Kennedy Drive and has lived in Milltown for 12 years. Mr. Dixon. Thank you. Good evening. Continued commitment to moving Milltown forward. That is my why for seeking re-election to Borough Council. Ensuring that the progress made during the past several years with the assistance of the majority of the Council continues and we stop kicking the can down the road. Instead of applying Band-Aids, it's critical that we de develop forward-thinking solutions for the array of challenges facing Milltown. We face many challenges, and the need for strong, effective leadership has never been greater. My integrity and my many life experiences allow me to effectively address the tough issues facing our town. I am committed to the community and dedicated to progress. Having served on council, I realize that my responsibility is to represent the residents' interests at Borough Hall, actively listening to the residents' concerns and ensuring their issues are addressed to the best of council's ability. Realizing the complexities of the law and having an awareness of the risks and potential rewards, 
of a, ch of a change are critical in making tough decisions. A bad decision can undermine years of hard work and thousands of taxpayer dollars. That's why I'm not one to sit on the sidelines. I am determined to ensure that decisions are made for the right reasons. I have dedicated my life to people and public service. It's what I believe in and what I know. I realize that my constituents are seeking a candidate who is decisive, determined, and dependable, all qualities that my track record reflects. My intentions are to ensure there is continued focus on improving the infrastructure of our aging town while addressing the needs of our public employees and our volunteers. Progress has been made on infrastructure improvements during the past years and must continue while maintaining a stable tax base. As a project for development of a municipal complex to house the public works and fire department has just begun, we need to ensure that the concerns raised by both FEMA and OSHA are successfully addressed and compliant facilities are provided. They deserve that. Furthermore, it's critical that this project is completed in a fiscally responsible manner. Milltown needs council people who are innovative and action oriented who reach out to the community, who are clear-eyed about the challenges the town faces, who bring a mindset of public service and not a political agenda. I am confident in my ability to serve well my many neighbors and friends, the people of Milltown. Thank you. Thank you. Next and last, <laughs> um, by the order of the, of the draw, is Stacy Sullivan. She is a lifelong resident of New Jersey and was, pr and was raised between Milltown and East Brunswick, New Jersey. She has been married for 13 years and has two sons. Stacy and her husband purchased their home in Milltown from Stacy's maternal grandmother in 2010. It is the home in which Stacy spent her childhood with fond memories of visiting her grandparents' home and sitting on their front yard to watch the fireworks on the 4th of July. Stacy has faced many challenges in her life, starting with the loss of her mother when she was five years old and her mother was 27 when she passed away. Stacy, her sister, and her, and her father went to live with her grandparents in Milltown for several years before moving back to East Brunswick. When she looks back at that time, she realizes how fortunate she was to have been raised by two generations of family. They taught her how to work hard, how never to give up on, on your dreams, and the importance of family, faith, and giving back to your community. Stacy had a career in the banking industry and worked her way up to the mutual fund sector of finance. Stacy was also responsible for managing 401k plans as an account manager at Prudential and City Street, where she received the Distinguished Employee Award in 2003. In 2006, Stacy was thrilled to be able to stay home and raise her children. Being a full-time mother had been a childhood dream come true. When her children got a little older in 2010, Stacy attended DeVry University and earned an associate's degree in Network Systems Administration, graduating with a 4.0 GPA in 2013. Stacy worked part-time as a faculty assistant at DeVry, where she tutored students in the computer networking lab and assisted the network professors in classes. Stacy received various awards from DeVry and placed in competitions such as Cisco Networking Academy Skills and the Nixon Cyber Security Tournament. Stacy volunteers her time in the community where she serves as the Milltown Fourth of July Committee, teaches catechism for special needs um, children at St. Thomas the Apostle. Stacy raises money for Eden's Autism Services and serves on the School Climate Committee at Academy Learning Center. Thank you. Ms. Sullivan. I want to say thank you to the Milltown residents and the people here today for taking the time to coordinate and facilitate this forum. I am excited to have this experience of a lifetime. When I think about why I'm running for Borough Council, it is because I want to contribute and to give back. I think whether you're Democrat, Independent, or Republican, the feeling is the same. 
This is a great town, and we all want to preserve the integrity of this town. We want this town to prosper as it did in the past. Zig Ziglar is a great motivational speaker, and he says, you can have everything in life you want if you will just help enough other people get what they want. This embodies everything that I would like to be remembered as. I believe we all have something to give. We all have a talent that many can benefit from, whether it be finance and computing, to baking or landscaping, chipping in is important. If, you simply, if I were simply to explain my past employment, it would be customer service. It is a word that we cringe to think about, and no one wants to call customer service. But there I was on the front line to help unhappy people and resolve their issues. Through the years of my employment as a 401k account manager, I was very successful in resolving issues maintaining large and difficult clients, and civilly resolving issues with various departments, ranging from legal docu documents to contribution processing to accurate statements being mailed to clients. I believe the ability to work as a liaison between the end customer and the various departments in large companies like Prudential and City Street, which is a joint venture between Citigroup and State Street, will be a great asset to this town. I'm a loyal individual, honest, which can make others upset, but I am compassionate. I'm a firm believer that debt makes us a slave to the lender. And in my personal life, I carry a home, uh, a home equity line of credit. I do not lease or have credit card debt. I've worked very hard to live at or below my means, be a saver, and I believe that a paid off home will be the status symbol of choice. My philosophies in life are the same views for Milltown. I will do my best to make prudent choices with your tax dollars. As a person who has learned how precious and short life can be at a young age, I want you all to know that I will cherish this experience through the good times and the bad. And I believe that the residents and business owners are my customer. I want to thank you all for taking the time to talk to me. And I hope that I can be entrusted with this great honor of being our town councilwoman. Thank you. Thank you. We're now going to switch to questions from the news media. Ms. Chang, could you go first? What will happen is one question will be asked. It will be Mr. Dixon will start with it, will go through and return to um, Ms. Sullivan. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Um, campaigning around town, what is one issue you are hearing? If elected, how would you start tackling the issue? Well, one thing we hear from all the people in town uh, consistently is the infrastructure problem and how we have to maintain it. Everybody's starting to realize that when old infrastructure breaks, it has to be repaired immediately and therefore costs a lot more than if it was maintained and continually updated. We have to do that. Uh, we also have to, and again, the people we've spoken to agree 100%, we have to move our uh, public works department out of that floodplain. Uh, people are starting to realize uh, from myself and Ms. Sullivan talking to them that every time it floods, and it doesn't have to be a major storm, it just has to be that creek behind it rising. Equipment is lost, manpower is lost, much time is lost. And it has to be taken care of. It has to be moved. FEMA, as they've come in during Hurricane Irene, and I was on council then, I walked the town with them. They said, this building has to be moved. We're moving it. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Rakershaw. I'm sorry. <laughs> As I said, it can get confusing. Excuse me. Ms. <laughs> Mayor. Yeah, here you're answering Ms. Chang's Same question, right? 
Right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, it's interesting because Phil and I have gone door to door. We've covered about three quarters of the town, and I haven't heard one person mention that they were concerned about whether the public works uh, garage was flooding. But we have heard people that are very concerned about the tax and utility rates going up. We've also talked to a lot of people that when they have a problem, they haven't known who to call or when they have called the borough, not gotten a response. People who have trees around wires, who have water issues, a bunch of quality of life things that they would like to get addressed as quickly as possible. So that would be our goal, to make sure that if someone has a problem that it gets addressed as quickly as possible. Thank you. Mr. Sullivan? Ms. What am I doing? Mrs. Sullivan. I've got this, these notes, but they're not working. <laughs> this is a problem. Could you repeat the question one more time? Sure. Campaigning around town, what is one issue you are hearing? If elected, how would you start tackling the issue? Uh, the, probably the biggest issue as we've been running, uh, walking around town since the middle of July, um, Trina and I, is uh, listening to folks. And it basically comes down to uh, how expensive it's become in town, um, especially when that's coming from a senior um, who is on a fixed income. Um, perhaps getting blindsided or not knowing that their water and sewer rates went up 10%. Um, you get asked about a project and they, we, we kind of turn it around to them, which project? Is it the Ford Avenue project or is it the project across from Borough Hall? And most people didn't even know that that was going on. Um, we walked around town, giving out our cards, giving out information, how to get in contact with us. Um, Probably the biggest thing that I would talk about um, or take care of is listening to the folks, making sure that their um, concerns were um, returned, and um, just that they had a, a say in what things were going on. Okay. Um, I talked to a few people, and um, I've been around town the past couple weeks and talked, and I find that the, the taxes are definitely an issue that um, residents have a problem with. And I have to explain to them that as a council person, I am only going to be responsible for 22.5% this year of your tax dollars that you pay. Uh, the Board of Education is responsible for 63% of your tax dollars. So if you want to make an, if you want to know what's going on with your, your tax payment, you'd have to look at your bill and see which parts are allocated to which departments. And maybe um, once you understand that we have a, we only take care of maybe five million for the entire town, whereas the Board of Education has 15.5, 15.5 million dollars, that's for the education part. So um, maybe together we can all work together to maybe lower costs for the, the tax residents. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. No, Mr. Rockshaw. Thank you. Um, I want to sort of piggyback off of the previous question. Infrastructure is always a big issue, especially in small town USA, which we clearly agree Milltown still is. There's only so much that you can do in terms of raising taxes and things of that nature before you price residents out. With that as the backdrop, are there areas that you're familiar with relative to waste that needs to be eliminated that can help keep the budget in line and be able to not stress the residents further from a dollars and cents perspective? Mr. Mayor? That's to me. Um, actually, I, I agree with you. I mean, there's only so much we can spend. And it's interesting to hear from the only incumbent on the panel that we've been kicking the can down the road for quite a while. And if we are concerned about infrastructure, we certainly have had time for incumbents to take care of things as well. What I would say is there are certain things that we certainly can do. We were just had a meeting which Mr. Revolinsky led a really good meeting about water quality, and several residents got up and talked about having brown water, having no water pressure, because they're 
at a dead end. And I know that we did have a project that would address that at, at the end line so that that's an infrastructure issue that we can do in stages. There are other things that we obviously can't do everything all at once, but if we plan for this year, for next year, going forward, we can address those problems and not have to wait until we have a disaster, which really could be a blow to our budget. Thank you. Mr. Zabrano. So I'm going to continue with my communication. So um, I, I, don't, I don't think that, um, I, I think that in, in overall, um, the infrastructure in the town is obviously a concern. Um, we had, uh, you know, up, in, up until, you know, um, Mr. Dixon came along, um, we had a water replacement project that was in place that was put in by the previous administration. Um, that sort of went away. Um, we, were take care, we were taking care of those things proactively. Um, and um, now we, we just seem to wait for something to happen. And, and then, as Mr. Dixon said, it, it does become more expensive um, when that happens. Um, the project across the street is the project. Um, that, that space was always um, purchased for putting and moving the municipal garages across the street. Um, it was never intended to attach more um, facilities there, uh, upping the price. Um, it, again, and it was never communicated. Um, so hand in hand, you got to communicate these things to the residents and, and, and make sure that they understand why we're doing it. Thank you. Ms. Sullivan? I think that, I, I think just as a person who lives with a family, you try to plan and save and, and think ahead for home purchases, for any, when you have a home or anything. And the same goes for the town. You try to plan, but yes, things do come up that have to be addressed. And sometimes plans have to be set aside to handle things that need to be addressed. And throughout the country, our infrastructure, you could read articles, are, is falling apart just everywhere because things were built during World War II era. And the same thing goes for our town. We, if we wanted to try to tackle everything and save for any, everything, then the taxpayers would just be voting new people every single term because their taxes would be going up so much, constantly. So you try to mediate with that, and you try to spread it out as best you can and handle things as they come along. Thank you. Mr. Dixon. Well, as far as kicking the can down the road, we've done that enough. That has to stop. The infrastructure problem, yes, it's a major problem in this town. The town, 18-something, was founded. We've had problems since. There is some development possibly coming to Ford Avenue that's going to burden our, our current infrastructure, our old antiquated infrastructure, a great deal. We have to take steps now to minimize some of that. As far as what's going on across the street, as it's been referred to, that is way, way past that. When FEMA comes out and every time they've replaced our equipment lost, our trucks, our trailers that flooded, they said, we're not doing it anymore. We just can't keep doing this. And as far as a firehouse goes across the street, I challenge anyone to tell me of an older firehouse in this state that's in condition that is and we still have volunteers risking their lives, not only going to fires, but just getting in and out of the firehouse. So it's something that has to be addressed. Thank you. Mr. Zambrano, you're gonna start with the next question from sure. Ms. Chang. Um, what are your feelings on the proposed um, public works and firehouse firehouse complex, um, do you agree? Um, do you think it's moving in a positive direction? If not, why? Uh, as we've just heard, um, we have a lot of infrastructure issues in town. We have brown water in certain sections of town. We have uh, numerous breaks um, in, in pipes. Um, we had a major um, break in, a, in, in the only sewer line that goes out of Milltown. Um, 
I think that we should take care of those first before we start to plan for additional um, expenses. I, again, I, I would love to um, give everyone in this town what, what they would like, but when there's folks that come to a meeting and they say they have brown water or they don't have water pressure, that's, that's something that should be taken care of as soon as possible before we start building something across the road. Uh, yes, um, the, the, um, the, there's certain facilities that need to be upgraded, um, but to bond for $16 million and not give a breakdown as to what you're going to do or put there um, and just pass it through without pushing it by, the, by asking the residents is, is just not right. I fully support uh, the building of the DEP uh, municipal complex and the fire department. I have personally toured the shed that these people have to work in. It is the, 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 the utility shed, whatever you want to call it, is in shambles. I've taken pictures. You can go on the Milltown um, Republican Organization website and see the pictures I've taken of the ceiling falling apart. We have been told that FEMA will not cover another flood. And every time there is a rain, the men have to move all the equipment. And there is so much equipment in that building to move. They've had to go down to Janet Court and the stream behind there at Lawrence Brook and get equipment that's gone down river. It's not something that these men should be doing. Um, it's, not, it's not helping us that they have to do this. So, I, and I also believe that the fire department building is just also a shambles, and I've toured it as well. So, I think this is a positive move for our town. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Dixon. Well, the issue has been brought up several times of brown water. I can say this, and I can say this because I've been there. DPW building in the back, when it rains, has brown water running through it, and that's not healthy for those gentlemen. We owe people in this town. The workers in this town, at least a decent place to work. We're not building, quote unquote, the Taj Mahal. We're giving them a building that meets OSHA and FEMA standards and quality. Many people don't know, but years ago, OSHA came in and did an inspection of the fire department, and they condemned the fire department. And we did everything we could to keep it operational. Without a fire department, we're talking taxes going up. Well, your homeowner's insurance is going to go up if we have to rely on farther people away to respond to this town. And that's a fact. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Ms. Mayor. Yeah. Uh, Ms. Chang, the issue that we, I've heard from several residents isn't whether they're for or against the firehouse or the new public works garage. It's the fact that they hadn't heard anything about it. When we did the electric substation several years ago, there were several meetings. There was input from the public. Uh, I think it was sometime in the spring we did the Milltown Borough Council approved a $15.8 million bond issuance for the municipal project. So it may not be the Taj Mahal. However, it is a very high price tag, and we haven't seen the plans or what is actually involved in that. So. My concern would have been that pe more people would have had input before the bond approval. And I mean, I'm not saying that it doesn't flood, that things don't need to be done. However, as Ms. Sullivan said, that's a lot of extra debt to take on for a town of our size. Thank you. Ms. Mayor, sorry, Ms. Sullivan, you'll start the next round. Is it possible? I don't know what your, what your question is, Mr. Rackerty. Is it possible that they can answer it in 30 seconds each rather than a minute? Or is that? Perhaps. I don't think so. I'll we'll ask your question. We'll <laughs> Perhaps. Wait, wait, wait. I'd like to cut the time a bit if I can. <laughs> this is my fourth year asking questions to the candidates. And the one thing that Milltown has going for it is They've had quality candidates and quality representatives on the borough council throughout the time that I've been involved in this. And with tap into Milltown spots, with covering things on a hyperlocal basis, we've gotten a lot of feedback and a lot of different things that we've had the pleasure of covering. But what I'm curious about, we've heard three-minute speeches. We've 
kind of had some back and forth. But the question to all of you, whether incumbent in Council President Dixon's case or the other three candidates, what makes you the right person? What makes you the one that's going to turn the corner on some of these issues that year after year we're talking about same or similar? You've got a full minute. Mm -hmm. thank, thank, thank you. I, um, I, have a, I have the time. I have a, a personality that's very detailed. I like to keep spreadsheets and detailed reports of someone I visited, what their issue is, this is what I did in my profession, the notes, what follow up, following up with them, and then getting a resolution. So I feel that if people have issues, and a lot of people may feel that they're not getting feedback or not knowing what's going on, that is something that I've always prided myself in under promising and over delivering. So I believe that that would be a great asset to the community to have someone that was very reliable, someone that had a, the time to deal with their issues, because I would be on call all day. So um, that would, that's why I would think I would be a good candidate. Thanks. Thank you. Mr. Dixon. The time I've spent on council, I've always given 100%. I've, as my bio said earlier, I'm retired. I believe it should be a full-time position. I make it a full-time position. I'm available 24-7. I think, at the best of my recollection, that there may be nine people in this town that don't have my cell phone number. Because whenever I ask for it, I give it out. And they all have it. I get calls every day, 365 days a year, and I try to address them all. I may be just putting them off to someone else. For example, if our zoning question on zoning, I don't know everything about zoning. It has to go through a zoning official. But I know who to put them in touch with. I handle the situations. I go out and visit the people. And again, I can say when I'm not in town and possibly on a week's vacation, my phone is still with me. I've never turned it down. So when you're asking why are you the best person, my heart and soul's in this town. I care for this town. I'm here for this town, and I'm here 24-7. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Mayor? Unfortunately, I'm not here 24-7, <laughs> but they say if you want something done, ask a busy working mother to do it because we can juggle many things at once. But with my background, I, I came back to town, I volunteered, I have spent the last 20 years with small children through uh, you know, illnesses and I came to appreciate how great this town is and that's the one thing that I will work hard to keep it that small town that we've all known and loved. I mean, I grew up here. It was a great town to grow up, and so I have the drive to keep it nice, affordable, and I have obviously the education, the experience, and I am, you know, have volunteered on the Board of Ed, started a foundation when the school board did have some budget issues, so I show, have shown that I can get to work and get things done. Thank you. Mr. Zambrano? Um, I've been a, uh, I was on the school board um, for five and a half years. Um, I've been a coach in this town, uh, in the rec department. Um, I'm on the environmental commission. I'm on the planning board. Um, like Trina, I'm not available 24-7, but that doesn't mean that I can't make it to any part of Milltown in five minutes. It is only 1.6 miles in circumference. Um, I pride myself on um, getting back to people and making sure that uh, their issue is resolved. Uh, if, if that isn't taken care of, then what's the point of having somebody in council? Um, I'm not from here. I didn't grow up in Milltown, but I wish I had. Um, it's, it's, it's become my home. I hope to someday retire from here. I hope I can afford to retire from here uh, and, and, not, and not have to move away because of the how expensive it's become uh, just because of poor planning and, and just financial decisions that don't make any sense. Thank you. Just to show well, my daughter just called from college. <laughs> Do you know I'm on TV? Leave me Go away. <laughs> We're now switching to questions that you've submitted from the audience. We're going to also switch directions that we're running. 
and Ms. Mayor will be the first um, to answer this question. Okay. This year represents a unique opportunity in that if one candidate from each party wins, and the borough, the borough council will be evenly split, three Democrat and three Republican, how will you approach working with a split council and differing opinions in order to achieve the necessary goals for the betterment of Milltown? The betterment of Milltown would be the number one priority. I have said, speaking to people, I have come in with no agenda other than to do the best job for all of the people of Milltown. It, to me, it doesn't matter if you're a Democrat or Republican. Obviously, we're all giving our time to do the best for all of the town, and I will certainly embrace that. I have on the Board of Ed, even though it's not party divided, we may have differences, but it's what is best for the children and ultimately all of the people of Milltown. So I am assured that I can work with anyone, any council member. Thank you. Mr. Dixon? Well, the, the first thing that, you know, you have to take to look at if it becomes a 3-3 split, um, it's how we still have to approach the major issues in town at the time as what they are, whether it be the infrastructure, the building across the street, Ford Avenue, and I can give you a thousand other examples. We have to do it as a council. It's the council who are elected to make tough decisions and have to make those decisions. If we become a 3-3 tie, it goes back to the mayor. The mayor is the break on that tie on certain things. There are certain votes that come up that have to be the majority. We have to work together. And I don't see a problem with working together as long as we take politics out of it and don't keep politics in it. The betterment of this town comes first. Helping the people in this town comes first. And that's it. Thank you. Um, after coming to the council meetings, many of them, um, I can see that being an issue of the, the, the division. Um, I personally am a flexible person. I like to listen to all sides, and I, I, would, I wouldn't personally want to uh, compromise any of my beliefs, but I also don't want things to get log jammed either. So I'm hoping that we can work together, um, that we can all try to figure out what's most important, what needs to get done. Um, I, I'm, I'm open to working with every, any person, so I hope it, everything would work out for the best with, all, with the division. Thank you. Mr. Zambrano. As, as Trina said, um, it's, it's for the betterment of the town. It's what's in the best interest of the towns, of, of, the, of the families in town. Um, I don't really, I'm not really, I don't really care if you're a Republican, a Democrat, an Independent, a Green Party. It doesn't really matter to me. Um, where, where does your heart lie? Where do you, where do you think, what are, the, what are the issues that should be the most important? Um, division, that's, that's hard to say whether there's any division right now. I just think folks need to, um, uh, before you get up here on a council and, and you start to um, actually make decisions that affect the town, should have some small conversations so as it, if, if there are any divisions, you don't see that division come up in a council meeting. Um, we never had these kind of issues um, in, in a school board. Yes, it's not party, it's not along party lines, but obviously not everyone's going to agree, um, but everyone agreed and, and went with the decision that was best for the town. That's what's most important. Thank you. Um, Mr. Dixon, you'll start the next round. Thank you. After many broken promises, the Ford Avenue site looks worse now than ever. How would you ensure that the health of the residents that live around Ford Avenue will be protected during demolition and future construction? Ford Avenue is moving along. Uh, anyone that doesn't know, it's right under, currently under court order that those buildings have to come down. Part of that court order is that there's an environmental person on site while a demolition is being done, monitoring the air. That is being done and reports are being submitted to our zoning officer. Also, water has to be present. Site has to be wet down to keep the dust down for the people. 
This is being done. When it wasn't done, they were brought back to court on more than one occasion. Also, we've had to shut them down and stop work there when they come out with a garden hose while they're taking a building down. Anybody has any common sense? No, you're not going to keep dust down with a garden hose. We had to force them and mandate them to bring in larger lines, which they had to provide the sewer hookups and everything else for. So we're addressing it. We're addressing it daily. Our zoning officer is present there. We watch where the stuff goes. We see the reports. Again, nobody wants to hear it, but Ford Avenue is private property, but it is under court order to be cleaned up, and it is moving along doing that. Thank you. Um, I take my son to school at Joyce Kilmer, and I drive past the site every day, and I have been taking pictures of um, big trucks removing lots of uh, debris from the site. I've taken pictures of a van that I, I'm not sure, maybe that they're probably doing air quality checks. Um, I, I've, been wa I've been watching what's going on. I, I think they're... We're, they're huge buildings that had to be taken down, and this is going to take time. And I, I know that the, the business that owns the property also has issues with bankruptcy and um, has had equipment taken away due to them not paying the companies and had to get a court order to get the equipment back to remove the, uh, the, to remove the debris. So I, I do think, I do see things moving along there. I do now take pictures of the debris being moved because I, I want it to be proof that there is progress being made. Thanks. Thank you. So uh, as we walked around town, Trina and I, um, again, one of the issues that did come up was Ford Avenue. Uh, many residents said uh, it looks worse now than it did before. Uh, it looks like Sarajevo. Um, it's interesting that um, uh, Councilman Dixon says that everything is under control and it's being monitored because just that last week's uh, meeting on Tuesday at the council meeting, we had a resident from Ford Avenue say that uh, there's actually nothing um, that's, that's being overseen. There's, there, is no water there is no air monitoring. There, there is no water. Um, Councilman Dixon even said that um, he wasn't even aware that, that this, this was going on. So. Don't make promises if you say you're going to do something, if you're going to say you're going to oversee it. Yes, I understand it's private property. Keep finding that owner. Keep making sure that folks just don't show up in the middle of the day and make sure the zoning official is there to make sure that things are taken care of in a, in a, in, in a right way. Thank you, Ms. Mayor. Yes, I agree with Phil. I mean, the rubble has been there for over a year. People have commented on it every day. I understand that it's private property. I would hope that the borough would carefully oversee what is going on, the cleanup. And I was here at that meeting last week, too, and it was heartbreaking to see the concern on that woman's face when she was worried about the safety, the dust, things that she thought that the borough was addressing, but maybe not. So we would like to be assured that even though it is private property, the borough is carefully overseeing what is going on on Ford Avenue. Thank you. The next, next person to start will be Mr. Zambrano. And this will be the last question. Um, as a council person, your primary responsibility is to represent all of the residents in Milltown if elected. Sorry, all the residents in Milltown. If elected, how would, how would you assure that all residents have the ability to express their opinions and be heard on matters that affect their quality of life and finances? Uh, that, that's, that's a pretty easy one. Open up the channels of communication. Um, have more than one meeting a month. Um, on an annual basis, uh, reach out to uh, the residents of Milltown and, and make available a survey. Uh, with a number of questions. It can be numbered from like 1 to 30. Uh, it could be 1 to 10. What are the issues that affect you the most? Take in that, that feedback. Um, have a town hall meeting, if needed, one or two, just to reach out to the residents to make sure that they are um, in, in the council's thoughts, that we are taking their feedback. 
uh, into consideration so that, uh, that you're, they're your partner. I mean, it is their tax dollars. They need to be involved. That's what I do. Ms. Mayor? Yes, well, on the school board, we updated the website. We have social media feeds. I'd like to see, investigate that for Milltown as well to have an updated website. I know we talked about having shared services with the board. We looked at our IT people coming over here to help, and some of the officials here uh, didn't follow up on that. So I would love to see a brand new website where we could get easily get information. Also, to, ha to encourage more people to come to the meetings. We had a packed house here for the lead in the water, and Rich joked that if we put it on Nixle and, and reminded everyone, we could get them here. The more people that we can get involved in the process, the better. So I would open up any and every channel of communication to enrich the experience for all the residents of town. Mr. Dixon. Thank you. Well, one of the ways that you would make sure that everybody knows what's going on is to personally respond to the complaints. Just prior, you heard reference to a young lady who stood up at our council meeting, was complaining about Ford Avenue and what was going on. What was not said is that 8, eight o'clock the next morning, she received a phone call from the zoning officer who explained everything to her, who had provided her prior to that evening, although she made a statement that she had not seen them, all the environmental reports. That's what these people do. When we hear complaints, we respond to them. We just don't put it on a computer that's half the people in town don't look at or can't handle. We respond to the people. We go to the people that have the complaints. We have to go to the people that bring up the issues, and we handle it directly, person to person. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. I walked around town, and if someone wasn't home, I gave them my phone number to call me if they had any questions. I believe that as a council person, you have to be out there around town as much as possible and be in contact with the people to find out their problems because a lot of times they won't reach out to you so easily. Um, they'll complain to their neighbors maybe, but they might not reach out to the council themselves. So you really have to go and put your face out there and let them know that you want to know what their problem is. And then you also have to resolve it and you have to be able to put the time and effort into helping them. So um, I, I do agree with the, everybody. I think the website is informational. Sometimes it's a little tricky to find some things, but I, I, I think, and we do have a, the Nixle communications, I got two of them about the water, so I, I found them helpful. Um, but I do think that a lot of people don't know who council is, and you have to put your face out there and get out there to the people. Thanks. Thank you. We come now to a break. Um, it's for five minutes. It permits the candidates to think through what all has been said and to respond as part of their closing statement. When we come back um, in five minutes, and roughly you'll tell us when that is, um, we'll go from Ms. Sullivan this direction for the closing statements. Okay? Would we? Okay, we're now doing the closing statements, and Ms. Sullivan is starting. Thank you. I would like to again say thank you to the Milltown residents and the people here tonight who participated in the forum. I am in it for helping people. I am in this for raising the bar in this town. I want to see our home values increase over time. I have the time to be committed to the council. I have compassion and empathy, and I have a tenacity to see each, each issue through. I take pride driving down our main street and seeing the planters with flowers, the flags and decorations, the businesses open and serving customers. I do have a concern about the main street losing some businesses, but again, I am grateful for our successful businesses. When elected, I will make the town business owners aware that I am a business-focused councilwoman. I want to make Main Street as business-friendly as possible. People spending money in Milltown helps the whole town. And I want to help in filling those empty storefronts with businesses that will be successful. 
start an initiative that Milltown wants business on Main Street. And let's not forget that businesses use electricity, which also brings revenue to our substation. I am aware that there is a balancing act between the residents and the businesses and the ser services provided in this town. And I want feedback from all. While on council, I would like to work to build an um, updated, maybe m more modernized website for the borough. I have created as a volunteer a new website for the Milltown Fourth of July Committee, and I've also created the Milltown Republican Organization website. And I also maintain and update, update both. The council has an important job, and the, the residents need to be aware the council has input on approximately 22% of your tax payment. The Board of Education annual budget is determined by them, and last year it was almost 15.5 million, or 63% of your payment. The borough budget was 5 million, and the borough provides all the services needed to run the entire town. Please be att pay attention to who you vote for on the Board of Education because they determine a larger chunk of your tax dollars. They have been increasing your taxes by a max of 2% every year, which is on average $200 per household. I stand behind rebuilding our infrastructure and I hope the Council and the Board of Education will coordinate their budgets when the town needs to provide necessary basic services for every resident. Thank you, Sullivan. Okay, thank you. <laughs> well, to begin with, we want to thank everyone for hosting tonight's candidate forum and thank all of you here who are interested in hearing all the candidates' views. You've heard differing, differing views on the issues facing our town tonight, and I'm certain you realize there is plenty to do to continue to move Milltown forward. While I'm confident there will be differing opinions, one thing is certain. We all need to work together for the betterment of Milltown. Taking steps in the right direction to improve our aging infrastructure is my utmost concern. We need to make our projects, make sure our projects are properly planned and spending is kept in check. While postponing a project may be of interest to some, Understanding the impact is what's important to me. Do we spend money on maintenance now, or is it in the town's best interest to provide a more innovative solution? Each needs to be thoroughly vetted to provide transparency so fisc fiscally responsible decisions can be made. Our focus needs to be on improving efficiency and maintaining operations within their budgets. Our focus needs to be on providing more transparency transparency to our residents, increasing communication about all the issues. Our focus needs to be on finding collaborative solutions. Our focus needs to be on addressing our residents' concerns. Working together, we can achieve so much more for the borough of Milton. When you go to vote on November 7th and you want someone who is dedicated, determined, and dependable, someone who will do what's right for you and what's right for Milltown. Please consider my running mate, Stacy Sullivan, and myself, Ron Dixon. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dixon. Thank you. Thank you. I'm proud to be the Vice President of the Board of Education, so I can speak to the 63.5% of the budget that we control. When we, I too am interested in maintaining the property values of the home. And one of the most important factors when you go to sell your house and you're driving and someone's coming into town to buy a house, what's the first question they ask? How's the school district? They generally don't ask how's the salt depot? How's a bunch of things? The first question is the schools. And Milltown schools are consistently highly rated. There's a website called Picket Fences, which rates the school districts in the tri-state area, and Milltown, out of 10, is a 9-plus. We still, on the Board of Ed's budget, have not gotten back to the budget that we had eight years ago when Governor Christie <coughs> slashed so much of it. So we've had to try to get back to where we were. We have 
special ed, we have tuition in there, we have many expenses. So that is, I'm proud to say, we do have good schools for what we spend. Also, I'd like to say that I'm happy that we've gotten to talk to so many people, and I would love to hear from more. I'm going to put my cards right up here, so I invite the audience to come and get the card. It has my email address and my phone number and our website. So now I'm going to go into my quick closing remarks. I appreciate your attention this evening. In the next three weeks, you have a decision to make. Who do you want to represent you in Milltown? Please consider who has the experience and the drive to be your <laughs> voice in Borough Hall. Phil and I are ready to tackle all of the issues that we've talked about tonight. It's not going to be easy, but I will dive right in to work with all of the council members and borough officials to come up with the best solutions for the challenges that Milltown faces. As I've said many times tonight, Phil and I have been walking door to door to meet as many of you as possible. We've heard your concerns. I've seen the anxiety on the faces of some seniors who worry if they can afford to stay in their home. We did not just do that as part of the campaign. We want to be your voice in Milltown. How could we do that if we don't listen to people? One thing that almost everyone said is they like the small town feel of Milltown. It's the reason why they moved here and the reason why they've stayed here in town. I'd like to think my dad would be proud to see me up here. He loved this town. When he found out he had pancreatic cancer while staying with me in Florida, the first thing he said was, I want to go home. For those of you that don't know, my father, Walt Jensen, was born in Milltown in 1910. He and my grandfather owned Jensen's Hardware. They were both members of the fire department, my grandfather was chief, and many other localization, organizations, including the American Legion. My dad knew everyone in town. Thank you, Ms. Mayor. I have just one more. I would uh, give a little latitude too, since the other side brought up the Board of Ed. I'll just finish. In closing, I'd like to thank, uh, thank Russ Einbeiner and uh, the Cable Television Committee for organizing and presenting tonight's forum. I'd also like to thank our moderator, Deborah, and uh, to the folks in the media, Rob and Kathy, for taking the time out of their busy schedule to be here tonight. Uh, in my opening statement, I mentioned that Trina and I have been walking around town uh, since mid-July, uh, meeting with and speaking to all residents. Um, we actually got compliments being out early in, in July and as we progress through August, September, and, and now October, no one's really ever mentioned that they've seen anybody else come to their, to their home. Um, we, we met with young couples, young couples with small children, um, families uh, with kids in high school, and of course with the seniors. Um, exactly what you'd like to see in a town, 1.6 uh, miles of circumference, a nice cross-section of the, the residents. It's what I refer to as a circle of life. I've lived here for 13 years, but I've been coming here for 21 years. Uh, we visited from New York. We celebrated Christmas and New Year's here. We visited during the summer. Um, there was a pool available in the family house. I'm proud to say that I haven't missed a Fourth of July parade in 21 years. As a resident, I've been a girls' soccer coach, a uh, girls softball coach volunteered for the parking view uh, for the park view parking loop. Uh, I was a school board member for five and a half years. Um, Ms. Sullivan uh, refers to the uh, the percentage of your taxes that are school based. Uh, that's not a Milltown problem. That's a New Jersey state problem. Um, it, it also is something that uh, came about in 2009, 2010, when Governor Christie did cut all state funding across the town, across the state, I should say. <laughs> My goal, if elected to the council, is to make sure that this town stays affordable so that my children and your children, if they choose so, can one day raise their families here. Um, but that also means making sure that our seniors, most of whom are on a fixed income, can continue to afford to live here to keep that circle of life going. On November 7th, please cast your votes for Trina Mayor and myself, and if elected, I'm not going to wait until January 1st, 2018 to get working for you. I'm going to start on November 8th. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Let me make a couple of, announce a couple of announcements and then a round of applause to end it. Um, this, this will be rebroadcast on Milltown TV 15 and also on YouTube.com. We were asked before what, what the full address is to get to it on YouTube.com slash Milltown TV 15. Straightforward. Um, 
As people have been saying, no, the vote is November 7th. Don't forget that you've still got one day to encourage people to register who haven't registered or who need to change their registration. You've got the three weeks um, to encourage people to get absentee balance, vote by mail balance, um, if, they, if they choose, if they have any question at all of whether or not they're going to be able to vote on November 7th. I'd like to uh, thank all of you here, and especially the candidates for the participation. Thank you. And now it's time for cheers.